Gerald Duran wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth, yet he's recognized today as an Inc. 500 serial entrepreneur, CEO, and venture capitalist. And as a mentor, he's helped business professionals reach their goals for decades now and says that no one needs to settle for stuck. Good to have you with us today, sir. I'm thrilled to be here with you. You look like a happy man. I am. <laughs> God is good. God is good. And you've got a testimony. We kind of want to get into that a little bit today as well. Awesome. And uh, also talk about his plan, my plan, roadmap to your per purpose. Uh -huh. But um, you grew up in a, in a home where you couldn't be wealthy and holy at the same time. You know, we were, um, we didn't know we were poor. But I think, but we were poor, yeah. and and um, back then in the church, uh, you know, success wasn't a good thing, and um, so the gospel was kind of bad news to me, because I thought, oh my gosh, I, you know, um, and I always knew I wanted to be a CEO. Yeah, even as a young boy, you used to kind of make believe. We had an old desk, and I used to sit behind it and close the door, and everybody else was playing with Hot Wheels. I was given orders. <laughs> <laughs> so that then influenced how you kind of, you know, approached faith and how you approached life and that desire, that purpose, that God's plan inside of you kind of was frustrated a bit. You know, back then I knew I was meant to do something and I didn't know what. And that message uh, was really disappointing. And so like a lot of youth, I, as soon as I got old enough to get out of the house and kind of go my own way, I, I left church and, and uh, you know, women, booze, drugs, and just kind of went down a wayward path. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God was always with me. He was always rescuing me. Um, and uh, when he would rescue me, uh, after I'd put him back in the trunk and move on. Yeah. And um, someplace in my life, um, things got bad. And um, 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 one time I tried to kill myself. Mm -hmm. And it was, that was the moment when, when um, I knew my life was out of control. And I had to spend a... Um, two days in a mental ward because when you try to kill yourself, yeah. that's what they do yeah. with you. Yeah. And um, I called a prayer line. Huh. And thank God for ministries that have these 24-hour prayer lines. Yes. And, and they sent me this book, Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. Wow. And I realized at that point that God had a plan and purpose for my life. Hmm. The problem is I didn't know what the heck it was. Yeah. And so I started dedicating my life to, to, to that pursuit, to finding out. And and, you know, this idea that God has a plan, and I think almost every Christian believes that he does, mm -hmm. but about 90% can't tell you what it is. Right, mm -hmm. right. So then how did you go, how did God begin to unfold that plan for you? Did he send you off to college or did you begin to work for other companies that modeled what you wanted to do in your own life? You know, when I was in my 20s, I'm young and dumb. I, I got a job at a staffing company. Um, after six months, I got fired. And then I had this, you know, my life went, I had the suicide attempt and all this bad things that happened. I read this book and um, that book gave me the courage to plan a business. I had absolutely no money, but I said in 12 months, I'm going to have a business. And instead of trying to connect the dots from where I am to where I want to go, I reversed it. Mm -hmm. I said, in 12 months, here's what I have to have. In 11 months, here's what I have to have. And so 12 months later, I had a staffing company. Young and dumb, didn't know what I was doing, didn't make any money for, um, uh, for a year. I drove a diesel truck at nighttime. And then I went to God and I says, look, it, you put me in this business. You got to show me. You got to give me the wisdom of how to crack the code. And one night he did, hmm. he gave me a marketing plan and it worked and the next day, or, or I shouldn't say the next day, but really literally the next day business started coming and once we hmm. implemented the plan. Wow. Hmm. And now uh, we're talking about his plan, my plan, it's, it's, it's more than just your, your story, it's really a lot of the, the wisdom that you've gained over the years. Why did you put this together? His plan, my plan was my success checklist. And when my life would get out of balance, I had these written down in journals and I'd go through these 10 checkpoints and there was always somewhere where I was off. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the first one being, do I realize when Christ died on the cross, how expensive that blood was, this inheritance that we had. And um, which led to me, am I reading the Bible? Mm -hmm. And so what I found is in the times that I wasn't reading the Bible, I wasn't hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's been a practical plan and, you know, as you become successful, people turn to you to be, become their mentors. And, and it became a course I taught. And then it became a, um, uh, a website with videos and, and eventually led into a book. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so in your project, you talk about four types of individuals. Right. Um, based on your own personal experience, first of all, w was there ever a time that you experienced these, 
these four principles in your own life? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think there's people out there that um, the first, you know, the first one I call the setbacks, and these are people that have achieved some success, success in life. Um, everything is going great, and then they experience great loss. It could be a divorce, loss of business. They could have lost their job, um, a death in the family, um, and and somehow they just got knocked right off their feet. Mm -hmm. And now they're always looking backwards instead of forward, trying to get back those good old days. Mm -hmm. And so th there's those people. Then there's what we call the serial losers, and these are people that, you know, it, it, what a harsh term, huh? But the serial loser. They never succeed at anything. Yeah. They try different things. They never succeed. So think about that. They're miserable. Um, and so you have those people. And then you well, have... Well, I'd also imagine that that is also a mindset that a person has. Um, totally. You know, oh, I'm a loser. I'm never going to be anything. So how do you walk them through that process of coming out of that? In our business practice and in the ministry practice, it's the same. The way we think... Our way of thinking shapes what we do, mm -hmm. and what we do shapes our results. So when we look at our results, if we're not happy with our results, what we have to do is go back and say, am I willing to change my thinking? And the only thing that stops us from doing that is pride and ego. Um, now, some people, if they don't feel accountable for the results, maybe they have a victim mentality, so that's a way of thinking. They think, you know what, I don't have to change my thinking. So whether we're dealing with the CEO that has a problem company, we're looking at the financials, and, and, and he or hers, are, they're not happy, or somebody's life, and they look at the results and they're not happy. The question is, are they willing to change their thinking? And so what does that mean? If we, if we put it in a biblical context, it means renewing our mind, mm -hmm. giving God permission to come in there and change the way we think. Mm -hmm. And you also talk about the realist and then the successful as well, no. so just touch on those The two. realist is somebody who played it safe. They never took the risk. They never went after that special person. They never did that business. They never, and so they live their life in regret. Um, what if, what could have? And so that's a third group. The fourth group are people that are successful right now. Um, and they, uh, but there's a hole, there's an emptiness and they're filling it full of stuff. And one of the things that I think we all learn is that there's three stages in life. You're, you're either in a crisis you've come out of a crisis, or everything is great, and you're heading right towards for a crisis. A crisis. <laughs> and so, you know, the perfecter of your faith is about to show up in their life. And, and so we see, you know, I can kind of take uh, the different audiences and put them into those four groups. And I think we've all been someplace in those four at different times. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pain, um, regardless of what stage that you're in. Well, Gerald, we're going to have you back tomorrow to dig into uh, more of this. And also, I want to ask you on, on tomorrow's program to share your Basically, it's like, it's like the Book of Job story in yeah. your life where you were way at the top of your game, so to speak, and then everything just came crashing down and what that was like and how, you know, how f faith was an important part of, of coping as well Absolutely. as regaining uh, traction in, in life so that Absolutely. you weren't stuck. Uh, but today, let's just finish up with um, talking about the, your America 28 tour. You, you've got a mission and a passion to see a, uh, a, a, a sweeping a success come across our nation and across the, the people that are engaged in, yeah. in, in life. You know, um, our country's really divided. Um, we're divided racially. We're divided um, politically. Mm -hmm. um, people, you know, when I saw people um, um, waiting four or five hours, eight hours to get into a stadium to hear, you know, one of the candidates, I'm thinking, what are they, you know, who would, they're not even political people. They're looking for hope and the hope's Jesus. So what, we want, what we're doing is we're planning this tour across 15 cities. We're working with pastors across the country. And, and, and um, we're, we're, what we're gonna do is activate people into their purpose. And um, so it's, it, it's, it's an exciting thing that we're putting together and um, we're launching in 2018. And it's called America's Success, Success tour. tour 2018. Yes. All right, wonderful. Thank you for being with us today, Gerald. Pleasure. Look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. All right. uh, to connect with Gerald, go to GeraldDuran.com. Find out more info on his plan, my plan, as well as America's Success Tour 2018. You can also go to our website, harvest-tv.com. You'll find an easy way to link back to Gerald's site as well. Coming up later, you can hear from Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's teaching. We'll be right back.